Well, good morning again. Mrs. Benson advises me that it's just a little bit warmer. Is there any appreciable difference? No. Well, she's putting on the best possible face on And I'm sorry. Again, uh, they're working on it. At this time, the defense has an opportunity to present its case if it wants. Uh, do you wish to present uh, any witnesses, Mr. Gorgian? Yes, Your Honor. You may call your first witness. The defense calls Donna Norris. <laughs> Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God? Yes. You may be seated. Please state your name for the record. Spell your first and last names. It's Donna Norris, D-O-N-A, Norris, N-O-R-R-I-S. Ms. Norris, good morning. Let me provide you with some introductory instructions, which I give to every witness in every case. Some people think that it's uh, repetitive, but it's always an individual witness, so I'm speaking to you as an individual. Please uh, sit back and relax. Please speak loudly, and that way everyone will hear you. If you are called upon to provide a yes or no answer to a question, answer the question yes or no and avoid using slang like uh-huh, uh-uh, which can be confusing. And lastly, while you may think you know what a question calls for and want to ask it or answer it uh, quickly. It's important that you wait to hear an entire question before you respond so we don't have people speaking over each other at the same time. Is all of that okay? Yes. Thank you. This would be direct examination by the defense. Mr. Gorgian. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. May I approach the witness and uh, remove the cup, Your Honor? I believe that was the cup used by Dr. Schaefer. Absolutely. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Norris. Good morning. Where are you employed? At the Beverly Hills Police Department. And what is your position? I'm the Communications and Property and Evidence Unit Manager. And how long have you worked at the uh, Beverly Hills Police Department? Um, over 17 and a half years now. Your Honor, I have a two-page document from the Beverly Hills Police Department that I like marked Defense PPP for identification. Triple Papa. Ms. Norris, showing you what's been marked as defense PPP, page 1, and defense PPP, page 2. Do you recognize this document? Yes. And what is this document? That's the 911 call for, uh, looks like, June 25th, 2009. And was this document created during the ordinary course of business during the time of the event. Yes, it was. I'm going to ask that you please explain to us what all these numbers mean. And I'd like to direct your attention, and let's start at the top left corner, the 909-273-4846. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us what that is? That's the uh, caller's phone number on the cell phone. So that would be the, uh, the number that actually dialed 911? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Norris, there's a laser pointer over there in case you want to use it, if that okay. would make it easier. Okay. Now, next to that, there is a TK009-122018. Can you please tell us what that is? Yes, TK stands for trunk. Uh, the Beverly Hills Communications Bureau has nine lines that ring into its uh, center, and each line is essentially called a trunk. And... It hit the uh, trunk nine at 12.20 and 18 seconds. So after the person with the 909-273-4846 dialed 911, the call first registered at the Beverly Hills Police Department trunking system at 12.20.18. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Directing your attention to the RI-12.20.21. Do you see that? Yes. And what does that mean? RI means ringing. It just started ringing at the console at 12.20 and 21 seconds. Okay, so that's when 
the call actually began to ring at the Beverly Hills Police Department? Yes, okay. in the Communications Bureau, yes. Now next to that, there is a C0005-122026. Can you tell us what that means? CO stands for connect. That's when the dispatcher actually pressed the button to pick up the 911 call, and that was at 1220 and 26 seconds. Okay, so 1220-26, that's when dispatch actually picked up the phone? Yes. Okay. And next to that, there is a TT009-122050. What is that? TT stands for transfer through. That's when the 911 dispatcher pressed the button to transfer the call to another agency. Okay. And, and, and do you know where the uh, call was transferred in this case? I only know in this case because I also pulled the uh, audio for this case as well. Okay. And was that to the L.A. City Fire Department? Yes. So that happened at 122050, correct? <laughs> correct. Okay. Now, directing your attention to the uh, 31051130029, can you tell us what that is? That's a fictitious phone number that the phone company assigns to cellular 911 so that it's routed to the correct agency. It's, it's a <coughs> cell provider thing so that it knows where to, the call to go, transfers the call. Okay. And next to that, there is a DI005-1221. 03. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, the DI stands for disconnect, and that's when the dispatcher pressed the disconnect button on the console. Okay, and that's the line. I apologize. And that's the uh, dispatch at Beverly Hills Police Department? That's correct, yes. And that's when they basically hung up the call? Yes. And next to that, there is a RLS 122104. What is that? That's when the 911 uh, system actually released the call. So it's no longer in the, our trunking system. It was released. And next to that, there is a DUR000046. What is that? The duration of the call was 46 seconds total. Okay. And that is the duration of the call uh, at the Beverly Hills Police Department, correct? Yes. Okay. That doesn't reflect the amount of time that was then spent with the L.A. City Fire Department, correct? That's correct. Okay. Directing your attention to the 2009 slash 06 slash 25. What is that? That's the date that the call came in. So the date of the 911 call? Yes, June 25th, 2009. Okay. <laughs> Below that, there is a 209 and then open parentheses 909273 dash, and it looks like it follows to the line below that 4846. And I believe you identified that's the number that had called 911, correct? That's correct. And that's what's reflected uh, on the uh, first entry on the top left corner, correct? Yes. Okay. Now below that, there is a 4846-1220-625 and an address 9641 Sunset Boulevard, BH, CW, 663W911 Verizon Wireless 80. Can you tell us what all that means? Well, the 4846 is the continuation of the cell phone number. 1220 is the time that it came in without the seconds. 625 is the date without the year, so that would be June 25th. Sunset Boulevard, uh, 9641 Sunset is the cell phone tower that this call hit. Um, the CW just stands for California Wireless. The 663 is the Beverly Hills Police Department's um, ESN number, which is the emergency services number. It's a number that the phone company uses to route wireless 911 calls. And the Verizon Wireless um, is the uh, cell phone provider in this case. And the 80 continues on to the next line. That's 800. That's their phone number to call back if we have to trace a line or anything like that in an emergency. The 4 after that is simply the extension. So the phone number would be 800-451-5242, extension 4. Okay, and the uh, 310 is what you testified earlier as being a fictitious number, correct? Yes. Following that, there is a uh, BHLSTB0592 E7NWVZW Beverly Hills PD query call. You see that? Yes. And what is that? Um, the... Beverly, BHLS means Beverly Hills. That's another way to identify the location of the tower. The TB's Thomas Brothers with page 592 um, 
grid E7. The um, NW, VZW is, uh, I believe that stands for the northwest sector of the tower that this particular call hit. And VZW is Cal Nina's name for Verizon Wireless. And it's just saying here that our department, Beverly Hills uh, PD, our 911 system queried this particular cell phone call for, for where it was coming from. And the lat lawn underneath that is another location identification for the tower. And that's the uh, information on the uh, last line. That's the LAT, and it's got some numbers, and the LON with additional numbers next to it? That's correct. And that's uh, information related to the cell phone towers? Yes. Okay. And to be clear then, uh, on June 25th of 2009 was when this 911 call was made, correct? Yes. And that 911 call was made by a cellular telephone number 909-273-4846, correct? Correct. And that call was first registered at the Beverly Hills Police Department trunking system at 12 2018, correct? Correct. Thank you very much, Ms. Norris. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Gorgian, thank you. Cross-examination by the people? No questions. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. May Ms. Norris uh, step, step down and be excused, Mr. Gorgian? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection by the people? No, Your Honor. Ms. Norris, I want to thank you for your testimony. Please don't discuss it or the facts of the case with any other witness until we finish the trial. You may step down. You may leave. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Gorgian? Yes, Your Honor, the uh, defense will call Alex Supal. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Please state your name for the record. Spell your first and last names. Alexander Supal, S-U-P-A-L-L, -L, last name, first name, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. Mr. Supal, good morning. Let me morning. provide you with some introductory instructions that I give to every witness in every case. The first of which is to please sit back and relax. The second of which is to speak loudly so we can hear you. And you may want to help out by just moving your chair a little bit closer to the mic. You don't have to bend down and speak right into the microphone. It's very sensitive. But you should speak loudly from a convenient and comfortable location. The third instruction is to answer questions yes or no if you're called upon to do that rather than using slang. And the last instruction is to wait until you hear an entire question before you respond. In our daily lives, most of us are used to talking over each other. But in a courtroom, it's important to hear only one person at one time. So do wait for that full question before you even start to answer it. Is that all okay? Yes. Thank you. This will be direct examination, Mr. Gorgian. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Where are you employed? Los Angeles Police Department. And what is your position at the Los Angeles Police Department? I am a police surveillance specialist. And how long have you worked for the uh, LAPD? Uh, 11 years. And can you tell us what a police surveillance specialist is? Uh, we operate and maintain electronic surveillance equipment for the police department. And in certain cases, you're actually asked to go to a uh, scene of an incident and to see whether or not surveillance recording cameras actually exist, correct? Correct. And if they do, uh, for you to retrieve uh, the footage of that camera, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, what's, the, what's the purpose of obtaining uh, surveillance camera footage? To capture any incidents that uh, were recorded by digital uh, video recorders. Okay. So you would agree these uh, surveillance camera footage can be very helpful in certain cases, correct? Yes. As you already testified, they uh, in some cases they actually capture the uh, incident at issue, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, directing your attention to June 25th of uh, 2009, were you working on that day? Yes. Okay. And uh, did you receive a call 
at which time you're assigned to go to 100 North Carrollwood. I did not receive the call. Our office received the call. Yes. And your office, is that the uh, SID? Yes, uh, Scientific Investigation Division Electronic Section. Okay. So a call came in, and as a result of that call, you were asked to go to 100 North Carrollwood, correct? Yes. And what was the reason of you going to 100 North Carrollwood? To assist with the possible retrieval of video. Uh, it came out that they weren't sure how to operate the system, so we, we wanted to come see if we could actually get some video from the system. Okay, so at the time you received the call, uh, the information was that there were security cameras at this uh, location, correct? Correct. And you were asked to go and assist to see whether or not you can retrieve the footage from the cameras? The, the operators were not sure how to play back video, so th they asked our unit to come out and take a look at it. Okay. And uh, did you respond to the uh, Carrollwood residents uh, alone, or did you have uh, somebody go with you? Uh, alone. Do you recall what time you arrived to the Carrollwood residents? Uh, not the exact time. Um, I believe it was sometime after 6 p.m. Okay. If I were to tell you approximately 7.30, does that seem accurate? Yes. Okay. And uh, when you first arrived to uh, Carrollwood, do you recall uh, who, if anybody else, was there? There were several officers there. Um, I do not recall exactly who. Okay. And when you first got there, what did you do? I checked in at the command post and uh, waited for instructions. We had to wait to get permission to go through the gates. Okay. And uh, do you recall whether or not a uh, Detective Martinez was there at 100 North Carrollwood when you arrived? Yes, Detective Martinez was there. Okay, and did you speak with him when you arrived to uh, Carrollwood? I believe I spoke with him during the, we were actually viewing the video. I, I, I spoke to Detective Martinez. Okay, and prior to viewing any of the video, did any of the officers tell you what it is they were looking for specifically in the videos? Uh, prior, when I first got there, the video could not be played. The security staff weren't able to play it back. So we actually had to find the machine that actually recorded the video. So the, my initial task was to just find the machine. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, there's one location or one area where there's a monitor that you were able to actually observe uh, what was on the uh, surveillance cameras? Yes. Okay, and that's the one where people were having problems in terms of playing it back? Yes. Okay. So you then proceeded to uh, look for the actual hard drive where the footage is stored? Yes. Okay. And, and what is that hard drive called? It's called a, a digital video recorder. Okay. And were you able to find where that uh, digital video recorder was? Yes. Did somebody direct you to where the uh, DVR was? No. I actually um, traced back the video line and it went inside the house. So then from there, we got permission to go in the house and we traced it down to the basement where we found the actual digital video recorder. So the digital video recorder was uh, at the, uh, in the basement of the house? It was like two stories down uh, behind the, uh, the, the entertainment center or the theater. Okay, and once you were able to locate the uh, digital video recorder, what did you do next? We, we had to then get a monitor because the, the, the monitor was actually up in the guard shack. So we, when we got the monitor, came back down and hooked the monitor up to the digital video recorder right in front of it. Okay, so once you hooked up the monitor to the uh, digital video recorder, at that time you were actually able to view the footage? Yes. Okay. And at that time, who was with you uh, in the, I guess, basement area of the house? That's when I was with Detective Martinez. Okay. Was there anybody else with you? There was a security guard from the house, and I'm not sure if there was anyone else. Okay. And was the security guard uh, Fahim Muhammad? I, I don't know his name. Okay. Uh, can you describe what he looked like, please? Uh, yeah, he was a tall uh, African-American male. Um, he was in the security shack when I got there. <coughs> Okay. 
So now when you start viewing the uh, recordings, uh, what if any footage was available to you in terms of how far back were you able to go uh, on the DVR machine? We, it was a machine with no um, CD burner, uh, just had play and reverse. And, 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 uh, so we went back to the relative time that we thought Mr. Jackson got home and started to play from there. And soon after, we, we found the footage. Okay, now the relative time. Who, who made that determination as to what the relative time was? I don't remember exactly who. Um, I just remember that they said, let's go back to a certain time and start looking from there, and, and that's what we did. Okay, could it have been Detective Martinez? Because I believe you it, said it he was the been. only detective or officer with you at the time. Yes, sir. Okay, and so the determination was made that the relative time was when Mr. Jackson arrived home on June 25th? Yes. Okay. Now, if the relevant time period had been, for example, from June 24th to June 26th, would you have been able to then download footage related to that time period? We would have been um, minute for minute. It, it's a minute for minute recording. So to record, you know, 24 hours worth of video would take literally 24 hours. So we could have done it, but it would have been a, a big effort. Correct. Uh, the DVR, the digital video recover, was capable of doing that, correct? It was capable of playing back the video, yes. Well, playing back to at least June 24th, correct? I don't know if it was capable. We didn't go back to June 24th. Okay. So how far back did you go? We went back to um, uh, a few minutes before the the actual video that would be recorded started because we had a general time frame as to when he would came home and we just went back a few minutes before that and started playing, playing okay. the video. And you testified you arrived there at approximately 7.30 in the evening on June 25th, correct? Yes. Now, the uh, DVR recording would have also recorded the events leading up to that time, correct? To 7.30 p.m. of June 25th? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I have a uh, disc here that I'd like marked as defense. I believe QQQ. Triple Quebec. For identification. It's the 0001. And Your Honor, I'd like to uh, play the footage contained on the fence number QQQ. How long? It's only seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, uh, what's being displayed on the screen, do you recognize that? Yes. Okay, and is that the uh, surveillance footage that was uh, downloaded from the uh, Carol Wood address? Yes. Okay, thank you.
Mr. Supal. On the bottom left corner displayed on the screen, there's a 09 slash 06 slash 25. Can you tell us what that is? Uh, that would be the date. That'll be the date of this recording, correct? That would be the date on the DVR. So the clock that's set on the DVR, that would be its date. Okay. And to the far right, bottom right corner, there is a, a 005824. What is that? That would be the time on the DVR. Okay, so that would be 1258? Yes. Okay, thank you.
Mr. Supal, uh, towards the end of that recording, it seemed as though the uh, footage was on fast forward. Did you notice that? Yes. Okay, and uh, can you explain what, what, if anything, that means? This was a uh, manually operated machine, so when we started the recording, we didn't stop it. So everything that we were viewing, we were recording. So I think at that point we wanted to see, um, see it again because we thought we might have missed something, so we just rewound it and played it again. Okay. And again, as you previously testified, had you wanted additional footage, you just would have continued watching it, and that at the same time would have recorded it on a CD? On a DVD, yes. On a DVD. Thank you. Now, uh, that particular footage that we just viewed, uh, would it be fair to say that was from a uh, camera from the inside of the property facing towards the front gate? Possibly. I did not locate the cameras. We only looked at the footage on the DVR. Okay, and uh, as you sit here today, uh, do you know how many cameras uh, were uh, at the 100 North Carolina residence? I do not remember. Okay. Your Honor, I have one more additional disc that I'd like marked as defense RRR Triple Romeo. And this one is also approximately seven minutes long, however, I will not be playing the whole thing. I would only be playing about a minute just for Mr. Supal to uh, view it. Yes. Thank you. I apologize. Approximately four minutes, Your Honor. Mr. Supal, do you recognize uh, that video? Yes. And was that uh, part of the footage that you downloaded on June 25th from uh, 100 North Carrollwood? Yes. And that appears to be uh, from a camera that was placed uh, on the outside of the residence, I believe on the keypad? Yes. Okay. Now, after uh, June 25th of 2009, did you ever go back to the... Uh, 100 North Carolwood residents to download additional footage? No. Okay. Uh, after June 25th, were you ever asked uh, by anybody to go back and download additional footage? No. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Mr. Gorgian, thank you. This will be cross-examination. People? No, no questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. May Mr. Sipal uh, step down be excused, Mr. Gorgian? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Walgren? Yes, sir. Mr. Sipal, I want to thank you for your testimony. Sir, please don't discuss your testimony or the facts of the case with any other witnesses until we finish the trial. You may step down and leave. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gorgian? Uh, Your Honor, I was going to ask if we can break maybe five minutes early. Okay. Thank you. May I see counsel for just a moment? Yeah, uh, luncheon uh, 
recess at this time. Please remember all the admonishments. Uh, I hope things uh, warm up a little bit uh, for your luncheon. Once again, my apologies. Uh, the staff are working on it. So we're going to be recessed to 1.30 this afternoon, at which time we'll resume. So thank you. Everybody have a nice lunch. We're in recess.